Kundalini, The Path to Regain the Divine by Tom Llewellyn, Part 1, The Terrain Kundalini is the universal, primordial, life force energy that exists in every human being and in all life. If we follow the word Kundalini to its root, we find that it derives from Kundal, which means coiled one, Kunda, pit, cavity, and Kundali, coiled rope. According to tradition and the experience of practitioners for human beings in our age, the main trigger to awaken Kundalini lies at the base of the spine, in the pit cavity area around what is known as Mula, which means root chakra energy center. Traditionally, in order that the Kundalini energy can make its ultimate ascent, it's from here in the root chakra that, it's of the, at, that the divine serpent needs to be awoken. The technology of how to awaken Kundalini seems to have been discovered by ancient practitioners of yogic-like disciplines in regions of the world like present-day India. For example, around North India there was and is a burgeoning tantric tradition that found expression in both Hinduism and Buddhism, but also probably has links to older, more shamanic-like, you could say, traditions. Perhaps the technology of Kundalini came to them these practitioners through deep scientific yogic observation and experimentation. Perhaps it was also revealed to them from higher forces and dreams, visions and other journeys of the spirit. However they discovered this body of practice, their suggestive guidance, insights and teachings have laid down a skillful map that can help and empower us to sensitively, joyfully and wisely explore the vast territory of Kundalini Shakti Yoga for ourselves. Kundalini Shakti Yoga, which is a term I will often use in this book for this practice, or Kundalini Yoga, lies in the same kind of spiritual bracket as Tantra, and as such represents a dynamic, open and fast-paced approach to spiritual unfolding and development. The root etymology of the word Tantra comes from two words, Tan, which means to extend and raise, and Tra, which means to free and transcend. We can therefore talk about the process of Tantra in the spiritual life as being about extending and raising consciousness and freeing and transcending energy. Indeed, our own word transcend has a relationship with the root Tra. The word Tantra also has associations with the word weave and loom. The traditions of Tantra are vast and have been expressed and developed in both the Hindu and Buddhist tradition. But as we have just hinted, perhaps we could say that they all essentially relate to the dance between consciousness and energy. Although I am in danger of oversimplifying, to get a feel for what Tantra is all about, we can usefully and playfully imagine a conversation between two ancient practitioners. One is talking to another and saying something like, Okay, if we boil it all down, what do we humans and all living beings that we can discern always essentially have. The other looks at her fellow human and looks about her at the woods, the sky, into the world of spirit and then looks to her own body and responds, well, essentially, we have consciousness and energy. All life has these two streams within it. Our lives are a dance of these two forces and so our yoga should support us in helping them to dance well. You could imagine that the practitioners then went on to weave a body of teachings, guidance and playful insights, a tapestry that shows us how we can help the dance of consciousness and energy to go well. This body of teachings we can call Tantra. Of course, in Tantra, the dance of consciousness and energy is often, at least on the relative human level, seen as embodied in the dance between the polarities of the masculine and the feminine, and these feelings have some relationship to the practice of Kundalini Shakti. One of the Tantric traditions that Kundalini is connected to is the way of the Siddha. The Siddhas, practitioners of Siddha Yoga, were and are accomplished practitioners of yoga who are known for their far-reaching spiritual accomplishments, austerities, tapase, and also sometimes for the Siddhis, 
meaning magical powers that flowed through them. The Siddhas are often the type of practitioner who live in remote, isolated conditions far removed from everyday society. Or perhaps they may live, sometimes in an almost secret way, playfully woven into the hustle and bustle of everyday humanity, but yet always remaining untouched by its conditioning influence. The Siddhas are often the gurus of people that take more formal teaching positions, but yet again there is nothing to stop someone who has a more formal teaching position from also being a Siddha. Although the Siddhas may develop certain esoteric abilities, such as the ability to influence matter, project their subtle body, clairvoyance, etc., and so become the channel for such seemingly miraculous manifestation, this is never explicitly the motivation for their practice, but rather the side effect of intense spiritual endeavors. The Siddha tradition also has linked to Kundalini through the ability of a great Siddha to stir up the Kundalini in another, through a Shakti Pak Shakti Pat initiation. Shakti Pat can be translated as something like the descent, Pata, of psychic energy. Shakti from one to another. Shakti Pat does not indeed, though, need to come through another human being. It can come from an encounter with a god, an angel, or even through a deep, impersonal spiritual experience. Shakti Pat is usually though talked of as relating to an encounter of one human with another, but not all traditions of Kundalini necessarily involve any kind of human encounter such as this. It is possible for the Kundalini Shakti to be self-activated by oneself. It can come from meeting a guru or god, but it can also come from touching the very essence of your own soul. However, if you do self-actuate Kundalini, this will only come because you have deeply aligned yourself with a deep, transcendent, universal consciousness. Within the traditions of Buddhism, Hinduism, and indeed in all of the world's main spiritual traditions over the last 2,000 years, we could say that patriarchal ways of thinking, generally speaking, have tended to predominate. This, however, is not really so in Tantra. In Tantra, the feminine has always been deeply revered. Rather than one gaining dominance, in Tantra the energetic polarities of the feminine and masculine are explored and then used to support each other. In Tantra we are encouraged to see that rather than one of the polarities being in necessary position of dominance over the other, they can be in a state of energetic dance and even union and bliss. In Kundalini Tantra, the feminine is always deeply revered, and the visionary encounters that the practitioner has are often of the goddess Kundalini Chitti. Kundalini Tantra or Kundalini Shakti Yoga is a very deep tradition, and when you begin to practice it, if you are doing it properly, you may well feel like the fabric of your being is being woven again with the essence of spirit. Tantra, at its best, can help us to weave a rich and exciting fabric within our being, and can help to untangle many of our mental and emotional knots. Through Kundalini Tantra, you may also begin to feel like you're drawing on a very deep and powerful pool of life force energy, subterranean streams that help to feed all life on this earth. You may even begin to feel in your deepest moments that you are connecting to star clusters of life, light-infused pranic energy that dance around our cosmos. Eventually, we may also feel like with our bodies, minds and hearts we are reaching right into, or at least as far as we can possibly get, into the very depths of existence and the creative impulse itself. Sometimes when you practice Kundalini Shakti Yoga, you may feel like you have plunged into a deep, fast-moving river, which desperately wants to reunite with the sea. Of course, all yoga is about unification and what can be called sacred individuation. The word yoga has this root meaning from the sense of union, the Sanskrit word of jagat, jagit, and in Kundalini, the movement towards these experiences of union can be very dramatic indeed. This word for union, jagat, also has a relationship with the biblical word yoke. The biblical word for yoke and kundalini shakti can be a very significant yet beautiful yoke to wear. In the kundalini shakti upanishad, 
the yogic Ortho refers to the raising of Kundalini as making the coiled energy straight. This is referring to awakening and raising the coiled serpent energy and bringing consciousness into the rod-like central energetic channel of the human energy system. More will be said about this in later chapters, but the union that Kundalini ultimately offers is extremely deep and far-reaching. It isn't necessarily a quick and light synthesis of the mind, body and spirit. Sometimes, honestly speaking, when you practice Kundalini, you may feel like you have been completely energetically demolished, even ripped apart. I know that when some people read that sentence, they may feel, oh, well, I'm not sure Kundalini is for me then. But in writing this book, I'm very clear that I do not want to merely present a polished, shallow, consumer-ready version of Kundalini. We can't usefully paint the scales of the Kundalini serpent with shallow consumer colors and hide her dark power. I want to present things in a truthful way, or at least the truth of my my own truth, and help us to get closer to the true essence of Kundalini Shakti Yoga. However, although the path of Kundalini may be challenging, the good news is that although sometimes through Kundalini you may feel like you've been shredded to pieces, blown up or blasted wide open, the sacred joy and you could say contract of working with Kundalini is that you can also you can always trust that even if the Kundalini Shakti does seemingly blow you apart for a time and take you back to ground zero, she will always help you to be remade with a deeper, complete and more sustainable link, an ability to express love, joy and understanding. I really believe that this is the grace and life-giving power of Kundalini and indeed this has been my experience. There are different ways of talking about Kundalini. One is the yog- one is the yogic te- techniques that lead to her awakening. But we can also talk about her as a basic evolutionary spiritual force in life and in this more unspecialized context we can see that Kundalini Shakti may naturally arise in some people at a young age, or even for, for some, they may even be born with her awakened. You could say that babies are packed full of Kundalini life force Shakti, but depending on how you approach it, certainly if you really actually want to raise Kundalini properly, the practice of Kundalini Shakti Yoga is probably most appropriate for someone that feels they need a serious, fast-paced, heavy-duty yogic technology in order to regain their connection with higher consciousness and the divine. In this sense, Kundalini although it will help to ultimately strengthen your heart, is not for the faint-hearted. Perhaps the reason why Kundalini has become so popular in the modern world is that on some level we know that humanity as a whole needs such a powerful technology to help us to all collectively relink ourselves to the spirit of love, joy and understanding. When we begin to explore and talk about the terrain of Kundalini, we are walking into a vast and profound space. So many questions, thoughts and observations can spring up as we walk. Why is it talked about as being like a serpent? Why does it trigger why does its trigger rest at the base of the spine? Why is its practice talked about as being risky or dangerous? How does the technology of it work? Before we look into these questions, as we have already used it quite a few times, it would be useful to explore the word Shakti. As we begin to explore this word, it's useful to seek to suspend our doubting analytical mind. We need to understand that the ancient yoga practitioners were not like materialistic scientists. They were not just seeking to understand material mechanics of the physical world. They were interested in what practices best illuminated and elevated the human being and helped them to untangle their mental, emotional and physical knots. Shakti is a way of talking about the energy or power that supports us in doing this. Essentially, Shakti is something like raw or refined spiritual energy and power. It's the oomph of the spiritual life. It's not that we need to think about it in a fuzzy way. Yet we can serve ourselves by softening the reductionist, materialist, dissecting mind that is always looking to categorize.